Good morning. Welcome, redeemed of God, to your Father's house, where we have a few minutes now to set aside the busyness, the distractions of the day, focus on God's good news to us. We will follow the order of service this morning that begins on page 236, the order morning. O Lord, open my lips. Hasten to save me, O God. Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Especially for the benefit of those who might join us online, our hymn now is hymn 549, as you see it posted. 
him 549. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I'd like to begin this morning with a bit of active listening as we read the Old Testament lesson that has been chosen for this week, Isaiah 49, verses 1 through 6. I'd like you to think about this question. How does this section of Isaiah 49 connect with and carry forward what we focused on in our chapel devotions last week, devotions that centered our attention on the baptism of Jesus. Bear that question in mind as we hear now God's prophet Isaiah, chapter 49, verses 1 through 6. Coastlands, listen to me. Distant peoples, pay attention. The Lord called me before I was born. He named me while I was in my mother's womb. He made my words like a sharp sword. He hid me in the shadow of his hand. He made me like a sharpened arrow. He hid me in his quiver. He said to me, You are my servant. You are Israel. I will be glorified in him. But I myself said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and futility. Yet my vindication is with the Lord, and my reward is with my God. And now, says the Lord, who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him so that Israel might be gathered to him, 
for I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God is my strength. He says, it is not enough for you to be my servant, raising up the tribes of Jacob and restoring the protected ones of Israel. I will also make you a light for the nations to be my salvation to the ends of the earth. This is the word of God. Well, what connections did you make? suppose if somebody answered me, uh, we could put together a pretty good list of ways in which this Scripture lesson connects with and carries forward what we heard last week in connection with the baptism of Jesus. But I'd like to, to suggest and, and focus on as a strong connection between the two is this. Last week, as we thought about the baptism of Jesus, we were reminded that one of the things Jesus' baptism is, is a signal that Jesus is now beginning publicly to carry out the work that his Father had sent him to do. It is, in a sense, his installation into the public ministry. What Isaiah does in, 40, in chapter 49 is Isaiah shares with us details of Jesus' ministry. He unpacks, he un unfolds the ministry of Jesus for us. And so today and tomorrow, guided by this Word of God, we want to let that be our focus, the ministry of Jesus. Today we will look in particular at the scope of Jesus' ministry. And Lord willing, when we gather together tomorrow, we'll look at the nature of His ministry and then its strength and confidence. So the scope of Jesus' ministry. When you think about Jesus' ministry, in what kind of settings do you see Him? Where do you picture Him? I suppose on the banks of the Jordan. Or maybe you picture Him on a hillside in Galilee preaching a sermon. Maybe you picture Him in a, in a small, remote village like Capernaum. Or maybe you see him at the home of two godly women, Mary and Martha and Bethany. And for good reason. Isaiah says, writes in our text, And now, says the Lord, who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him so that Israel might be gathered to him, the scope of Jesus' ministry was primarily the Jewish people, and the land of Israel. One of the blessings of the season of Epiphany, though, is that it broadens our horizons, it broadens our perspective, in that it reminds us that when God sent Jesus to do His saving work, He did not send Him only for one people or one nation. Already centuries before Jesus would take up that work, the prophet Isaiah said as much when he wrote these words. And now, says the Lord, it is not enough for you to be my servant raising up the tribes of Jacob and restoring the protected ones of Israel. I will also make you a light for the nations to be my salvation to the ends of the earth. I think that's why Isaiah puts Jesus where he does in the opening words of our text. I wonder if you caught it. As Isaiah unfolds, unpacks the ministry of Jesus for us in Isaiah 49, he begins with what seems to me to be a striking image. He says, coastlands, listen to me. Distant peoples, pay attention. In these opening words of his prophecy, Isaiah doesn't put Jesus on the banks of the Jordan or a hillside in Galilee or a home in Bethany. He puts him, as it were, on the shores of the ocean. Can you see him standing there? This vast expanse before him. His hands cupped around his mouth calling out, Coastlands, listen to me. Distant peoples, pay attention. 
Jesus has something He wants not just the Jewish people to hear, not just the land of Israel. Jesus has a message He wants the entire world to hear. I am the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Can you hear Jesus calling out to the coastlands of Russia or China or India? Can you hear Him calling out to the islands of Australia, the Philippines, Fiji, Can you hear him calling out to the nations of Iran and Iraq, Saudi Arabia, North Korea? Listen. Pay attention. I've come for you too. God has sent me to be a light for the nations, to be God's salvation to the ends of the earth. It's easy for us lifelong Christians, serving in the public ministry, some of us, it's easy to lose sight of Jesus standing there on the ocean shore, calling out to the world. It's easy for us to get caught up in where we are, to have this image of Jesus recede into the back of our minds, so much so that we spend little time thinking about those in distant lands, those on faraway islands who very much need to hear the good news that Jesus desperately wants them to hear. We get so caught up in the the busyness of life in our immediate surroundings. Cold workers get so caught up in the the duties of their immediate ministry that the scope of Jesus' worldwide ministry fades from their minds. I very much appreciate where Isaiah puts Jesus in our text. Standing there on the ocean shore reminding us, I didn't come just for Saint this or Saint that in some small upper Midwest community in the United States. God sent me as a light for the nations to be God's salvation for the ends of the earth. There's something going on this summer that I, that I truly wish every one of us here today could see and be a part of. Lord willing, the first week of June, people from around the world will gather in Seoul, South Korea for the meeting of the Confessional Evangelical Lutheran Conference. I've had a chance to be involved in that twice, and it truly is a wonderful experience to see Christians who heard this call of Jesus and who by the Spirit's power responded in faith to see them from different continents, Africa, Asia, maybe Australia, Europe, North America, South America, different cultures, different languages, to see them all come together at one time, in one place, united by one common faith in the Savior. It's wonderful to hear names you don't normally hear. Names like Herrera, Horpinchuk, Nadira, Villares, Krakora, along with Schmidt and Schrader. All united by a common faith. United together to praise the Savior, to grow in their knowledge of Him, and by their presence together in that time and place to encourage each other, to build each other up as church bodies in 
Bulgaria, in Albania, in Russia, in Latvia, in Bolivia, in Mexico, in Colombia, in Taiwan, in Hong Kong, as they all work to bring the message of Jesus to the world. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Amen. The peace of God which goes beyond all understanding will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. In place of the We Praise You, O God, we will join to sing hymn 952. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.